Welcome to this week's episode of the CC Mouse Podcast. We are good for your ears. I'm Dan, and you can find me at RFS Dan. And I'm Jess, and you can find me at Going to the Snow Dogs and Snow Dogs Vlogs and not Lost in the Woods anymore. Mm-mm. Pretty soon they're going to call you <laughs> $8Jess.com. Jess. $8.38. $8.38. That's what 24 hours without internet is worth these days, people. Apparently. Apparently. Wow. I- Unless you're my brother, then you get $25. That's because you're red flagged. They're like, oh, it's the Applebee's gift card lady calling. Don't <laughs> just give her the minimal. Just just give her like 10. Like who's got everybody's pulling together money in the office with their headsets on? I got like 34 cents. I got two bucks and they got eight dollars and 34 cents to credit you for being down for 24 hours of Internet. Yeah. If you guys didn't know, I didn't have we were camping for eight days and I didn't really have Internet. And then we got home and I didn't have Internet for 22 and a half hours. I don't know. I was, I was okay with you not having internet because when we, when we podcasted last week, you sounded beautiful. And that was just through 4G through using my cell phone. Yeah. You even sound more garbly now than you did when you were uh, miles away. Well, we could switch to something else, but no. Speaking of switching to something else real quick. Okay. I got a new iPhone. It's iPhone 11 day. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, don't apologize. (laughs) It's okay. I got Bless your heart. (laughs) Here's how naive I am. I got up at yeah, 4.45. Right? You bought an iPhone. <laughs> no, that's not it. That's not it. No, I, that's not because I bought an iPhone. I got up at quarter to five in the morning to get the least desirable color iPhone of all the iPhones. It looks like, I don't know what it looks like. I thought it was going to be more yellow. I got the yellow one, people. I got the 11, just a regular 11. I didn't need the fancy big one because it's already like an inch and a half bigger than the phone I have now. So that's weird to hold with two hands. But it's just like weird yellow. I don't know why you would pick yellow. I have two cameras. How many cameras do you have? Two. <laughs> oh, darn. Darn. I don't know. How many cameras do I have? I have two on the front and one on the back, I think. I have slow fees, though. Did you see today when I sent oh you? Oh, God. I can't believe you even said that word out loud. <laughs> Man, even in the press conference when the ladies are like, and we call them slow fees. I <laughs> applauded at the same time I cringe. I'm like, well done, whoever, because 40 people are sitting in that room, right? And the ones like, yeah. uh, it's slow fee. And they're like, yeah. And he just went home that night to his wife and was like, slow fee. And like everybody was celebrated because he came up with slow fee, which is the obvious answer. But I cringed when they said slow fee. But it did not stop me from sending you the first uh Slofy this morning. Charles from Thor Unleashed got one too, and he posted a Slofy on Instagram of uh of Thor, and he hashtagged it Slofy, and he's like, now I never have to use this hashtag again. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing: my Slofy's gonna die with you. I think I already deleted it off my phone. That was bad. <laughs> it was just me kind of spinning my head, it saying was a stupid. Of- feature ever like who needs that really okay, here, who needs that here's what i'm wondering because you can only do one thing with it and one thing only and it's that like beautiful flipping hair and i'm doing it right now it's this beautiful flipping hair motion that you have while you're trying to be like that girl for a second but what else can we do with this front facing camera slow motion stuff i guess if you hit record and ran backwards and did something in slow motion i guess for tiktoks it would it would be nice to be able to see what you were doing and have it be in slow motion mm-hmm does your camera do that? Ooh, mine's got a built-in like uh, GoPro, but it's got a really weird fisheye to it. I have to say that like I zoomed, I like super zoomed out so I can see my pop sock on the back. Like it's like super zoomed out, and it kind of looked fisheyed though. <laughs> hmm. well, well, happy new phone day, Dan. So maybe somebody my- else likes the iPhone besides just me. Somebody else out there, I'm sure, is drinking the apple juice and cheering you for getting an iPhone. And I'm just sitting over here laughing because, once again, you've just been sucked in. <sighs> but how do you know that I'm not the truth and you're the sucked in one? Because I'm smarter than you. Well, played. <laughs> well, well played. Well played. So you were gone. <laughs> you were gone. No, you know, we'll take a minute. Finish laughing. Get it out. Um, Are you good now? Are you good? I don't know. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So you were gone last that was week. Not very nice of me. Oh no, no, you can, can, by all means. <laughs> <laughs> so you were gone for a week, and I'm kind of wishing that you uh, took another week off by the sounds of this. <laughs> so what was your what was your loop? My loop. Mm-hmm. Yes. Where did like you where go? You went? Yeah. So 
Oh, I meant to look at the mileage on my car so I could tell you guys how many miles we drove, but I forgot. Um, we left last week Sunday, which was our 17 year wedding anniversary. Yeah. Yay. It was really, it was, it was super fun. Mm -hmm. We'd had our anniversary dinner the next day though. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we left last week Sunday and we stayed gone until, no, we left last week Saturday and we stayed gone until just this past Sunday. So we were gone a full eight days, which is officially the longest camping trip we've ever done ever. I think the longest before that was five days. Really? So, Even when you had to like take the car and like go to a ferry and get to the other side, like that was yep. longer? Yep. Our honeymoon anniversary we did through the UP was only four days. Um, so the longest one I think we've done, I was trying to figure it out, was five days that we've ever done a camping trip. So this was officially the longest trip we've ever done. Um, and we had, we did what we used to do. So, you know, Jamie and I have been together for 22 years, 22. 23 22 7 plus 5 17 plus 5 um that many years mm -hmm. <laughs> and <laughs> years ago it's 22 we, I, I counted with my hands it's 22 it, it's 22 years ago when we used to do this when we used to go camping like with a tent we would just put the tent in the car and we would drive till we got tired and then we would find a campground and that's where we would stay and then if we liked where we were we would stay there the next day if not we would get up and leave and go do stuff and then end up somewhere else the next night or whatever we never like really had a plan except hey we're gonna go up north that was it so this time around we have not done that in years and i know why it's because my brain is like where are we going where are we going where right. are we going i'm not really a very structured person but for some reason when it comes to having a campground and knowing that i'm gonna have a spot i like to have it paid paid for and know where i'm gonna be well the good news so is if the campsites are all sold out you can just go park at the walmart parking lot yeah, well, we didn't bring our generator, <laughs> but we could have. Yes, right. we could We could go park wherever we want, really. You know, real quick, I think it's awesome that you guys didn't have a plan and you just went. Nobody ever does that anymore. Yeah. You just went. It, it, in the end of it all, I'm really glad that is what we decided to do. Like, I had a tentative idea in my mind. Like, I wanted to make it to Minnesota, but once in the middle of the trip, when the weather started to get hot, I'm like, I don't want to be miserable. So I don't think I want to go all the way over there and try to do these longer hikes and have it be 80 degrees because it's not going to be good for the dogs. And it's not going to be good for me because I don't like it when it's that hot. 80 so, is so cool. Oh, my God. Yeah. 80 with the humidity. Come come up here, boy. It, it, come try it. It's not fun. It's uh -uh. it's it's not. It's not fun. We it's, had 7 percent oh. humidity the other day and oh. I was choking. Oh, it was, that's hilarious. <laughs> uh, it was so humid the one day I actually told Jamie I felt like I couldn't breathe. I'm like, I feel like somebody is standing on my chest. It, the air was so thick. And it was, that was the day I think it was the hottest. It was 84 or something with 90% humidity. Yeah, and you want but me right to come now. visit. You want me to come visit. What do you think I'm going to do with that? I'm going to scratch at the door. I'm going to rip it's out. Now. I can't do it. It's gone now. It's gone now. It's we're okay, Dan. We're going to do it sometime because one of these times you're going to have to come up here and we're going to have to take you on one of these camping trips and make you sleep in a tent and you're going to have to do it. One, it's amazing content. Two, it's super fun. You're just going to have to do it. One of these days in your life, you guys will have to do it. But anyway, we took off without a plan and we made it over the Mackinac Bridge. No plan. We're like, all right, well, here's a couple options. We could go to this campground or this campground or this campground. And we're like, uh, we've never stayed here. Let's go stay here. So we went to, we stayed, we've stayed in Grand Marais. We've never camped in Grand Marais, mm -hmm. I should clarify. So I'm like, yeah, let's go to Grand Marais. There's lots of rocks there. We can hunt for rocks. You know, it, we knew that the day was mostly going to be driving. So it wasn't like we were going to go do a whole lot. We're like, let's do that. Let's go to Grand Marais. And I told Jamie, I'm like, I can show you the dream machine coffee bus thing that I took my mom to and we'll go there. So that was the first campground we stayed at. And there, the, the story begins there. <laughs> so... That was Saturday night. That was our anniversary night. At five minutes to midnight, you and I decided we had to somehow get me into the podcast because I didn't think about that before I left. <laughs> and I yes. forgot, you know, hey, I'm going to be gone for eight days and we're supposed to have a podcast up in three days. So it was five minutes to midnight and you and I decided to podcast. And Jamie decided he was going to go look for those ember lights, the glowing rocks. And I'm like, okay, cool. You go look for rocks. I'll do this podcast thing. And then if you're still gone. You know, whatever, I'll figure out something to do. So he left to go for look for rocks. You and I did the little podcast thing. 
we were on the phone, what, 20 minutes, not even. And we hung up and I'm like, okay, I'm in here with the dogs. I brought my Switch. I'm like, cool, I'm going to play Mario. So I was playing Mario and, you know, we'd been driving all day and we had a lot of stuff going on and I'm, I was tired. And I kept feeling like I was falling asleep. So eventually I'm like, I'm just going to like lay down for five minutes. Jamie should be back any minute and he'll wake me up. And then if we decide we're going to have a fire or something, because we had a fire going before that. I'm like, well, maybe we'll cook marshmallows or something before we go to bed. So anyway, I fell asleep and I fell asleep in a really odd position. I don't even know how I was laying, but I had my keys hooked to my jeans still because I didn't want to lose them. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why I hadn't taken them off and just set them on the counter. Probably because I still thought I was going back outside. But regardless, I had my keys hooked to my jeans. And at some point, about 1.45 in the morning, I rolled over and I hit the panic button on my Jeep. So we're in a campground with, I don't know, a <laughs> lot of people. I rolled over at 1.45 in the morning and set my alarm off on my car. <laughs> so... Okay. I woke up in a mass panic because there's a car alarm going off. Then I realized it's my, you know, you know how when you're asleep and you wake up and you don't know what's going on? No, <laughs> I don't. I'm sorry. I don't. When I wake up, it's like somebody unpauses the VCR and I just keep on going. Uh -huh. Literally, I'm up and just ready to do math equations. No, I don't know that. Oh, God. Well, I woke up. Explain. Remembering, you know, it's like, where am I? Oh, yeah, we're camping. OK, my dogs are here. Why is there an alarm going off? And then I realized that's my car going yeah. off. I felt bad. The people next to us were in a tent. So I'm sure that woke them up. But anyway, I, I you know, found my keys, found my keys, hit the panic button, shut the alarm off. And then I'm looking around and I'm like, where the heck is Jamie? It's almost two o'clock in the morning. Uh huh. Where the heck is Jamie? Okay, he went rock hunting. He went rock, he left for rock hunting at five minutes to midnight. And literally the beach is like, like just right over the hill, right in front of us. Is it pitch black? Oh yeah, well, the moon was out so you could see a little bit. But I'm, I started to like, okay, where is he? How come he's not back yet? And he doesn't have his phone on him. And even if he does, there's probably no service anyway. So my brain started to do the where is he? Why is he not back yet? It's been two hours. That's too long. He should have been back by now. So I decide I'm going to take Kira because Memphis can sit in the camper by herself while I take one dog out. Kira can't. Kira can't be in the camper by herself yet. She hasn't figured out that it's okay. Um, and I don't normally like leaving the dogs in the camper by themselves anyway. So I hooked Kira up and I left Memphis in the camper. She had already fallen back asleep anyway. And I shut the door, locked the door of the camper. And I'm like, I'm just going to walk over to the edge. So I'll set the scene for you. We were camping at this campground, and if you walked, like, a couple campsites in front of our camper, there's, like, our camper and then, like, three campers in front of us. There's, like, a cliff edge, but not, like, a cliff edge. Like a, okay, like a cliff edge, but sand, not rocks. So right. it's not like you're going to fall down this edge and die. But it's a decline. Yeah, it's a decline. But it's a, it's a. It's a cliff. If mm -hmm. you fell off it, you might get hurt. It's probably about 30 feet down. Enough to where they have to put uh, stairs and get down to the beach. You may or may not make fail army. Yeah, exactly. You're <laughs> okay, going to bounce yeah. in the sand. Yeah. So anyway, I walk over there. Now, when you get to the edge of this, the beach where we were at, you can see straight up and down both sides. And even from the cliff edge, I could pretty much see the whole beach. I could see all the way to the lighthouse, and I could see pretty much to the sand dunes, but I couldn't see straight. Like, there were hills and stuff. So I'm standing up there with Kira, letting her go to the bathroom, and I'm looking for lights because Jamie's hunting for rocks, and there should be purple lights on the beach. Mm -hmm. And I don't see any lights. Ooh. And my brain starts to race. Like Again, horror movie? Up, like horror movie. Ooh. I'm like, okay, I don't see him. What's the deal? It's almost 2 o'clock in the morning. Where the heck is he? What is going on? So I go back to the camper, and by now I'm like, in full-on panic, trying to convince myself not to panic. Right. But I'm in full-on panic mode. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to put Kira in the camper. I'm going to shut the door. I'm going to lock the door. And I'm going to run. I don't run, people. I'm going to run to the steps, run down the steps, out to the beach, and look both ways. Because I should be able to see everything once I get down onto the beach. And I'll see them. I'll see the purple light. And I'll be fine. And I'll just go back to the camper. Right. Put the dog in the camper, lock the door. And you had a big knife. Ran. You had a big knife? No, I didn't have a big knife. Okay. I had a flashlight. Okay, that's close yeah, enough. Okay. I had a flashlight. So I run over to the cliff edge, run down the steps, and by this time, 
I'm full on panicking, walk out to the beach edge and I look to my left and I don't see anybody. And I look to my right and I don't see anybody. And at that point in time was when I believed that my whole brain and body went into full on panic. And I started to walk back to the camper and in my mind, I'm trying to convince myself, I don't freak out often. I'm Mm -hmm. not the type of person that goes into a panic often. I was full on panicking, couldn't breathe. My chest hurt. I'm like, okay, where is he? Why can't I see him? Now, the other thing I didn't say is there was seven to 10 foot waves on Lake Superior that night. So So it was crashing down, crashing down. There was a massive undertow. There were signs all over that said, stay out of the water. So in my mind, I'm like, he went out in the water to get a rock and got sucked into the undertow. Like, that's just what happened yeah, in my mind. Just, that's what just like, herp, 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 here I am, I'm Jamie. And then just like, all of a sudden he gets sucked under. How many Trulies have you had at this point? I, uh, up there, none. <laughs> 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 so I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, I got to go back to the camper. I started walking up these steps and I made the conscious decision. If I make it back to the camper and he's not there, I'm calling the police. Because I don't know what else to do. And I don't see him on the beach. Is there police there? Yeah. Or is yeah, it more like, like, is it more like a Gomer pile thing where it's like some dude's going to come up with a hat and like one bullet in his pocket? There's probably like two police officers there. Okay. So one the of those city. two guys has to come deal with you. One of those two guys would have to come deal oh, with you. It's me. the Applebee's gift card lady. What are you looking yeah. for? <laughs> yeah. So I walk all the way back to the camper in a panic. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was panic- panicking so bad. I was sweating and I'm like, he better be in the camper. He better be in the camper. He better be in the camper. And I open the door and he turn. he's in the camper and he turns around and looks at me and he goes, where were you? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> like, I literally walked into the camper and I just grabbed a hold of him and he's going, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> and I lost it. I started crying. I'm like, I woke up and the car alarm was going off and you weren't there and I went down to the beach and I didn't see you and you weren't there and I didn't know what to think. And he's like, I'm right here. You're fine. I'm like, but you weren't there. You were in the ocean with Jack. <laughs> I cried. And then I'm like, I can't calm down. And he's like, you're fine. I'm right here. I'm like, I know I can feel you, but I have to get over this now. And oh my gosh. I'm like, I'm like, Jamie. We can't do this again. I'm like, why didn't we set a time? He goes, from now on, we'll set a time. I'm like, okay. Every time you go out from now on, we'll set a time. So no joke, every night from then on out, he'd go to leave and he'd look at the clock and he'd go, I'll be back before one o'clock in the morning or I'll be back before two o'clock Would in the, the morning. the streetlights come on, I'll come back? <laughs> You did the not... last night, him and Greg left the last night at like eight o'clock and I joked as they walked out. I'm like, you guys will be back before like what, two or three? <laughs> And Jamie goes, there ain't no way we're going to be gone that long. <laughs> I'm like, this, that's my panic point. If you're not back by two or three in the morning, that's when you know that I will get set off. That's again. a good curfew. You can be my mom. Like, I can come back in like two or three in the morning. Yeah, why not? Okay, let's scenario real quick. So when I come home, you're my kid. I'm, I'm, wait, I'm your kid. I'm like 17. Yeah, 17. I come home drunk, but I'm a pretty good kid. And I'm running up the stairs. And you're like, wait, 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 mister. You come down here. Am I in trouble if if I was a little drunk or, or, or am I grounded or? Oh, I don't know how that works. My dogs don't drink. Damn. Yeah. So that was the first night. Literally the first night of camping was me having a panic attack. Oh and I don't have panic attacks and I don't freak out. But I think it was like I was overly emotional because it was the first time camping without Shelby. And it was the first time being back in the camper without Shelby. And it was the first time hooking the dogs on the line without Shelby. Right. And feeding the do- All of that compiled with everything else. And it just, I don't know. I don't know if it was that. And then Jamie's like, you woke up to the car alarm going off. Of course you're going to panic. And I'm like, well, probably like that probably had a lot to do with it. It was being shook awake like not like i woke up because i wanted to i woke up because there was a car alarm going off where was he like just on the opposite side circling around the other way there was two ways to get down to the beach Mm -hmm. i walked to the left he came in from the right so so when i when i shot when i went down with kira he was probably just out of my sight 
coming up the boardwalk to the right. And then when I ran back and put her in the camper and then ran back down, he was probably walking through the campground. He said, he goes, I didn't have the flashlight on because there's lights in the campground. So I didn't see him coming through the campground because he didn't have a flashlight on. Uh, so all you had to do was just hang tight for a few more minutes. Yeah, but I, my brain wouldn't let me do that. No, by then it was it was late because we hung out and talked for a bit. And then, yeah, so. Yeah. Oh, dang, that was yeah. that was crazy. And that alarm went off because of the panic button. Yeah, the alarm went off because I rolled over on my keys. <laughs> and that was, yeah. so that was a good kickoff to your adventure. That was definitely a very... Very uh, interesting part of the adventure. <laughs> right. Uh, but the next morning, we did this, you know, not the same thing, but we got up and because we only stayed one night at that campground. And the plan the next morning was to drive across the Upper Peninsula of Michigan mm -hmm. to wherever. And we stopped in Marquette and uh, took the dogs to PetSmart. And we decided we were going to go to McLean State Park because we hadn't been there in 10 years. It, it's a long time. We hadn't been there in 10 years or so. So we're like, let's go back there again. We haven't been there in 10 years. Mm -hmm. We drove all the way up there, and that's in Copper Country. It's in the Keweenaw Peninsula. Um, so it's in the Keweenaw Peninsula of the Upper Peninsula. And this is all in Michigan? Yeah, it's all in okay. Michigan. We okay. didn't end up leaving Michigan. But um, we went to McLean State Park, which is another campground located on Lake Superior. I think almost every campground we stayed at was on the big lake. Yeah, every uh, campground we stayed at was on the big lake. I've heard of Lake Superior before in books. It, it's a real place. <laughs> it's a real place. It's not just flat it on the pages, Dan. It's a real place. Uh, yeah, so we went to McLean State Park, and we stayed there for mm. three days. Oh. We got lost on the back roads trying to find uh, High Rock Bay, which I really wanted to go to, and then after we – took like three wrong turns and kind of got lost. We gave up and I was really bummed, but Jamie goes, well, don't worry, we'll come back. And I'm like, yeah, in what, 10 years? That was my other joke. Anytime he'd say, we'll come back. If it was places we hadn't been in forever, I would, that, that was my joke. I'm like, what, in 10 years? You'll bring me back in 10, in 10 years. In 10 more years. If we would have kept going to High Rock Bay, though, it would have been really dark by the time we got out there, so... I, I get it. I know why we didn't do it. I, I think you could do it. Was it was still fun to drive the back roads of the middle of nowhere in the Upper Peninsula in my Jeep. Uh, roads that cars can't go down. Like, Jeeps will make it, but you're not driving cars down these roads. Right. And so That was kind of fun. And were you really lost? Have you guys had no plans at all? No plans at all. Were you really lost? I mean, technically, we had no plans at all, so not really. I thought it was kind of cool. You were just always sending me photos of green. Everything was just green and water. Oh, my gosh. I haven't heard the sound of flowing water in ages. Very green and water up there. Very, very green. And I was really surprised it wasn't really buggy. Like, I mean, the, the last day we dealt with um, flies and no seams. No, 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 light, no light bugs or glow worms. No, I didn't see any light bugs or glow worms. Oh. I only got bit by two mosquitoes. So that That's not bad bad. for you. You were very appetizing to them. Yeah, I used a lot of Wonderside. I I kind of have had a, I don't know if it's like a panic thing, but uh -huh. I didn't put any of the flea and tick stuff, the topical flea and tick stuff on the dogs because, I don't know, I just, after everything that Shelby went through, I'm starting to second guess everything. I did the same thing when Oakley passed away. I second guessed everything I do. And <clears throat> I didn't put their topical flea and tick stuff on. And instead I just used the wonder side. And then I had these little like clip on um, bug repellent things. They're called whiffies. So I like <laughs> them on their collars and they're all natural as well. So the wonder side is for people. So I used it on myself a lot and it must have worked because i only got bit twice does that stuff really work like do you notice a difference like is it just like yes. an air freshener you just like clip it to the dog oh no the whiffies uh -huh. the things that i clipped on their collars uh -huh. those things worked really well oh uh -huh. yeah i was impressed by those they they have a very powerful odor but the bugs stayed away from them so that works yeah so i kind of did the whole all natural bug repellent thing the whole time we were up there even for jamie and i i'm like don't spray d on yourself like, don't do it and we used wonderside and it it worked so i like i said i only got bit twice but there wasn't like a lot of bugs or anything up there so that was kind of nice that we didn't really have to deal with that much i thought there would be considering how humid it was but we really didn't have to deal with it a whole lot did you have but, to work much 
I um, couldn't. I legit couldn't because I didn't have internet. The plan was, not that we had a plan, but the idea was, we have a 4G booster for our camper that we couldn't get to work anyway. But we have a 4G <laughs> booster for the camper. So the plan was, I wanted to, I didn't have a video for Thursday or Friday. Remember, we left Sunday. Yes. My plan was to edit Thursday and Friday's video uh, for the vlog channel and then Friday's video for the dog channel just to have to edit the three videos and eventually upload them. And like Jamie kept saying, he's like, well, if anything, we'll just go to a McDonald's and you can just go and upload there or we'll just go find someplace with Wi-Fi and you can go upload there. And it just never really worked out that way. Like everywhere we were, we thought we'd have internet and then I, I just was irritated and didn't want to edit. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to sit here and edit, you right. know? So, so I just didn't. <laughs> what What is stopping you guys from getting in to the car and going again and taking a lap around the whole United States because travel vlogs are very popular. And right yeah. now with the dynamics of what you have going on, you are perfectly ready to do some sort of traveling around the country vlog of going to, that is my oven. It's ready for food <laughs> of going around the country and, and doing fun things. Like what's stopping you from that? Um, I think, well, part of it is, is, hauling a travel trailer is kind of difficult in bigger cities. Like when we go north, you remember when you came to visit us, like once we got two hours north of Detroit, we were literally in the middle of nowhere and it wasn't an expressway or a freeway. It was just a highway. Uh huh. I do. That's how all the roads are where we went. If we go the other way, you end up on the expressways and it becomes a whole different type of stress. Hauling the camper on a highway, nothing. Hauling the camper on an expressway with lots of cars and lots of semis, and it's stressful. So okay. I think that's a small part of it. And I think that they, I don't, I don't know. I would do it. I would do it like tomorrow. <laughs> I would do it like tomorrow. Uh-oh. <laughs> you but should. I would. I I have no problem doing it. I just... The only thing I would have to figure out, like, we'd have to get a better booster for the camper so that I would actually be able to upload. That's easy. Robo you have Amazon Prime. Hardly an inconvenience. You'll have it by Friday. <laughs> it would it would, it would, would be interesting. I want to do something again, um, possibly in November, mm -hmm. go south and go, like, to the warmer states in the colder months. I have warmer states. Right? We were already in California. Yeah. We drove there. Pfft. It's your turn. Why didn't you guys pack up and go to Area 51? Well, um, because I didn't want to be one of 150 people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> they said 2.1 million people were ready to go to Area 51, but 150 what? people really show. Is that really true? Uh, they probably all got high and wandered off. Most of them looked like influencers that were there anyway. I did. I I read a couple of the articles, but I think that it was a lot of people. The idea of it is funny, but the reality of it is, nah. Nah. <laughs> it was only like nine hours away from here. I could have. I could have gone. Could have. Could have been there. It's content. Could have got that content. But that's but all it was. It was only people that were getting content. Every yeah. single person was pointing a camera at everybody else. So may maybe not. Yeah, it wasn't worth it. No, whoever started the hype, though, that was, you know, good on them. Right. If we would have made it to High Rock Bay, we could have made it to the missile launch point. But they shoot aliens from there. I don't really know. They shoot aliens from there. <laughs> so, but the, everybody tried to capitalize on the on the Area 51 thing. When I was at Barnes & Noble's last week, it was read before you raid, it said. <laughs> it was a oh table of gosh. UFO books. <laughs> so I'm like, That's huh. Awesome. So I didn't hear uh -huh. anybody getting shot up and killed. Did anybody get, like, hurt doing this? I heard somebody got arrested for peeing and some per some girl got arrested for going under a fence. So R. Kelly made it to the to the area fifty one, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> nice. That was really really all I heard. Okay. I, I didn't, didn't have internet though, like so I don't I feel like I'm out of touch for the past week. Well, tell, well, tell me this. What's up with this lady that quit her job to go find her lost dog? Did and did this happen in your town? No, it didn't happen in my town. It happened in Montana. Okay. So I 
will never leave my dogs in a hotel by themselves. That is one of my biggest fears is like that a housekeeper is going to open the door and the dog's going to get out. It's probably irrational, but guess what? It's not because guess what? Somebody opened the door to this lady's room while she was gone and the dog was in the room and the dog got out and it ran down the hallway and it ran out the front of the hotel and nobody from the hotel called the lady to tell her that the dog got out. Are you serious? So, yeah. Nobody called her. She didn't know. She came back to the hotel and she opened up the room. The dog wasn't there and she started to panic and she went down to the front desk and they were like, yeah, the dog ran out the front door and we didn't, we didn't catch it. So this woman was so dedicated to her dog that she quit her job and stayed in Montana to search for her dog. This okay. she, this makes way more sense to me because they're out of town. Yeah. So the dog's yeah. literally lost. As soon as the dog hits the door, it's lost. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, by the way, last he ran out the door, like with a, with a mocha latte from yeah. Starbucks, just like right. nonchalantly. What the heck? I would run if I was behind the counter. I would. Le I don't care who's at the counter. I am running out that door after that animal. Like there's no yeah. way that like I would not be out there. What if it had right? like a newspaper and like a top hat and it's like good day and you're just like oh good day and you're like wait a minute. <laughs> I just. So. It I don't know, but she ended up Holy staying cow. there and like she printed a bunch of flyers and she went knocking on doors and I guess she like contacted all the shelters in the area and all the vets offices in the area and she followed up on every lead, every person that called her or texted her or messaged her, mm -hmm. she followed up on and she went and looked for where they said they saw the dog and then I guess she got a phone call. These people said they saw the dog and she drove over there and the dog was in a in the bushes and she called the dog's name and it come running right to her 57 days after no the dog was lost. I don't the even know. The dog had lost 12 pounds and 57 days she searched for that dog but she never gave up and she found him. Holy cow. Yeah, <laughs> that's a that's a movie. Mm -hmm. S right? I think they called it Homeward Bound. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, the incredible journey. But what about like what? What about is the dog gonna be feral already, or is the dog gonna be okay? Or oh, the dog's okay. Dogs are pretty resilient. Yeah, a couple pets, yeah. a steak. Yep. Or three. Yep. Wow. And then I told Jamie, um, or he told when Jamie and I were talking about it, he's like, they better give that woman her job back. I'm like, heck yeah, that's a dedicated employee right there. The fact that she could quit her job and dedicate 57 days to doing nothing but look for her dog, she's a very valuable employee. <laughs> oh man! Especially if the media picks up on it. Like, hey, remember that lady that used to work here? Which one right? is she? You know, Susan with the dog hair. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, she, she like her walked her out on her job so she could go find her dog. But yep. she found the and dog. She found the dog. I could she not, especially be okay. It's one thing when it gets out the gate, and then like you're at home still, and you're and you go out and you look. But when you're gone somewhere else, like where did she? Like you just stayed there. She stayed there. I couldn't. I couldn't not. I couldn't not give up hope. I could not. There's no way. I. I couldn't. There's no way. There was a. Um. This is the sad story. But, um. <laughs> there, there was a lady that got in a car accident. Um. Probably thirty, forty miles from here on seventy five, and she had her dog in the back of the car. And when she got in the accident, the dog was in a crate. But when she got in the accident, she rolled her car, and the dog got out. And took off. They saw the dog take off running. And it was a little dog. It was a little black and white dog. That lady made a Facebook page. She lived downstate. And she came up every weekend and looked for that dog. And did the same thing. Looked and looked and looked and looked. Winter came. Winter went. And when all the snow melted, they found the dog. He didn't make it. Ouch. I thought it was a story. <laughs> Jess Hatch, everybody. Jess. <laughs> Jess, everybody, you can I find her. I was a sad story, but <laughs> on a positive note. Bring us back up, lady. The lady kept the Facebook page going, and now she dedicates it to sharing stories of other dogs that get lost. And she's actually helped a lot of people find their dogs that have gone missing because she shares their stories. So okay, we're good. It, I'm good with that. It was a sad ending to her dog's life, but it gave her a purpose to be able to help other people to, to honor her dog. See? The end. I'm I'm okay with that. Okay, well, you 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 took us around the block, and I love it. Right? I just took you <laughs> on an emotional roller coaster. You did. You did. So, <laughs> so we only have three weeks left. I was counting the days until we get to hang out again for Vid Summit. 
Oh my god, for real. We I have to get on an airplane. Oh, that's right. We have to play this game. We play this game every time we hang out where you have to get on the airplane. And this is called Jess has a half a panic attack and is very chatty. And she's like, oh my gosh, I have to get on an airplane. I don't know what to do. I have everything packed. It's time to get on the airplane. We're going to be boarding soon. And you, you get so chatty yeah. when you have to get on the airplane. And then I feel like when you're on the airplane, you just squeeze your hands in a ball until you get off the airplane. Pretty much. But then I'm there I don't, and we have fun. I don't like the airplane by myself. That's the hardest part about coming out there to bid summit is that's the second hardest part about coming out there. Cause of course the hardest part is I actually have to be away from Jamie this time for five days. Last time it was only four days. Now oh it's five my gosh. days. What? Up in the ante. An extra day. Oh my God. All bets so, are off. It's that it's hard. And, but we just, you know, he, we did it a couple weeks ago when he went to Canada. So I know it'll be fun. And, and you didn't go feral. It'll be like last year, and I'll just take off for no reason because I have to call him. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, where How many is times she? Did that last year? I'm like, was, I gotta go. It, there would be this little smoke bomb, and I'm like, where'd you go? <laughs> oh, well, it's cool. I'll go hang out with Austin Powers. Uh, yeah, that was pretty much it. That'll probably happen again. You'll be okay. It'll be five days of fun plus Disneyland. Yeah. Disneyland. We have to recreate some videos. There's this, or some pictures. There's a picture of. Mark Hamill, who played Luke Skywalker, and he's on the back of of Daisy Ridley, who plays Rey, and he's like pointing straight ahead. And it's this very iconic picture that they shot recreating a Yoda picture of Yoda on the back of Mark Hamill. Can I convince you in front of the Star Wars land to jump on your back for just enough to get a snapshot? I got that new phone now. It takes snappy pictures. And we'll recreate that scene, but I have to hop on your back. Maybe. I'll buy you some. I'll buy you a churro. I don't want a churro. What about some of that blue milk from the movie? I heard they sell blue milk there. We have to have blue no, milk. I think it's souvenirs, man. All right. I will I will pay for an ear of your choice. Only one half of the year. I will pay for half your <laughs> ear for you to recreate that picture. You realize we're going to walk out of there and I'm going to have a box of stuff you're going to have to ship home to me. I'm okay with that. You know what I really want? I want one of those stupid overpriced Disneyland balloons in the shape of Mickey's ears. I've been to Disneyland. There's pictures of me on the Autotopio at five years old and I never had one of those balloons and I always wanted one. Then we're going to get one. <sighs> yeah, we're going to get one. We're doing it. We're doing it. I'm so excited. I'm, Yes. <laughs> I'm yes. We still need to have our questions answered, so we need to get Joel on here so Joel can answer our Disneyland oh, questions. God, we we should do that next week. Yeah, let's do that next week. We'll get Joel on here. We'll pre we'll pre welcome him, and and he will he will give us the lowdown on Disneyland since he's been there a million billion times, and he doesn't even live in the same state, and yet I live ninety minutes from the place, and I That's haven't so been crazy. there in ten years. It's gonna be fun. I'm, I'm excited. It's gonna be fun. We're gonna have a good time. We're gonna come back so excited. These episodes are gonna be like so much more manic. I think so too. And I think that there's like there's so much going on with the FTC. And I mean, we talked about it two mm -hmm. weeks ago with COPA and the FTC and all that stuff with YouTube. But they made a statement today that they're not. They're they're already backing off what they said they were gonna do. So also, I haven't read so the you updates. Love them again. So, uh huh. You love them again. No, but they're already starting to like change what they're saying and change the the crazy crackdown sounds like it's not going to be as crazy and things might not be so bad. So I might still have a job come January. <laughs> Good. They, they have me scared, Jess. I was trying to make another block bikes video the other day and I'm like, yeah. I can't be like, hey, kids, scooters. Like, I can't say that line anymore because the real line mm -hmm. is, hey, kids, comics for when they used to sell comic books in the 50s. And you I just have to call them something else. I can't say I can't call them kids. I have to be like, hi, youth. No, no, no. No, come up <sighs> with a fun word. Homo sapiens scooters. And then so uh, even me making these stupid videos on our block bikes Instagram page. I now want to change the way I phrase things because I'm afraid at some point that we're going to get like even a small fine. Like, hey, here's a hundred dollar fine because you said kids and purchased scooters in the same sentence on four of your videos. Right. I'm scared. Should I be that scared? I don't know. I really don't know. I Like I said, I haven't read the new stuff that they've kind of changed and said things are going to be different. So I'll figure it out before next week. Yes, I agree. So yeah. next week will be a fun-filled podcast of Disneyland updates and COPA line reading. 
don't start a kid's channel Mm-mm, don't start a kid's channel we've been saying this for over 12 months we're trendsetters yeah we knew this mm-hmm. yeah please don't start a kid's channel we knew before it was panic worthy yeah we're like the magic <laughs> eight balls for your ears oh i gotta remember to bring you an ember light oh yeah please be yeah bring me one of those and also uh, a lot of them so please bring me a vid summit ticket because i don't have one yet well you're just not getting in buddy dang it looks like it's lobby leeching for dan yep that's all it's gonna be it's okay i have mentos i'll pop a mentos bam you'll be sitting out there and mr beast is gonna walk by and sit down next to you and And he's gonna give me ten thousand dollars maybe are you okay here's the thing since mr beast did he buy vid summit no he they keep making that joke he bought a portion of it summit. Okay. He's part owner of it now. So we're all walking out of there with something, right? Like some Oprah Winfrey size prize, right? Well, we're already getting a switch pod. It's I'm living it's the good, good life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So on that note, we should wrap it up. It's 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 time to go. So that'll do it for this week's episode of the CC Mouse Podcast. You can find us on Instagram and Facebook at CC Mouse Podcast. Buy our merch! sccmousepodcast.shop and thanks to everybody who's been buying our merch merch has been flying off the shelf lately at David Dobrik proportions <laughs> <laughs> leave us a message on speak pipe David Dobrik proportions mm. yeah wouldn't that be nice I know right one of his podcasts I don't know if you heard it he was like I did like 2 million on, on merch last year or no I'm sorry last year last month I'm like holy cow that's so much yeah. cotton those sheep it's like <laughs> these are the David Dolberg branch where we just make wool for his shirts I almost purchased one of those misspelled shirts the other day Did you Yeah but it was like 30 bucks plus shipping and handling and it was like it was like dinge it was like somebody washed a white shirt with some red socks I'm like why what am I doing I want the I'll rest when I'm dead shirt, but I don't like the colors that it comes in. And they're misspelled. Yeah. Yeah. So (laughs) anyway, we'll see you guys next week. Same house time, same house podcast. Bye. Bye. Hey, we did a thing.